Rep Zero Gap Blackwing Adjustable Bench is in many ways the best bench they've ever made. And I say that owning essentially all of them and having seen the unreleased AB5200 2.0 at the Arnold. But that doesn't mean it's a bench I'd recommend for everyone. The Blackwing is incredibly stable, highly adjustable, and clearly Rep put a lot of time into refining the design. You can even add attachments to it, making it a more versatile choice than their other offerings. It's essentially in every way an upgrade over the AB5000, and it even pulls in a lot of the best features from the AB5200. So why don't I recommend it to everyone? I could probably summarize the reasons in like 60 seconds, but I did pay for this, so I need the $26 of YouTube ad revenue. And as you'll see in this video, I've been holding on to a reasonable amount of benches, so I think it's best if I explain my points by making a few comparisons to not only these benches, but a few others I own. It may go without saying, but if I mention a bench in this video, I've reviewed it, so feel free to check out those videos after you watch this one all the way through a few times. And since I'm feeling generous, I'll link all the benches we talk about in the description in case you know you feel generous and decide you'd like to support the channel by using our links. What you won't see me comparing this to is Rogue's Manta Ray Bench, because while I ordered it months ago and have seen it a few times, it's clearly not here yet. But when it comes in, we'll be comparing to this one and some other FID benches we own, so subscribe so you don't miss that review. Speaking of FID benches, that's what this is, meaning it can be used for flat, incline, and decline work. Though, if you want to use it for things like core work or really deep decline bench, don't ask me how I got into that position, or if you want to use it for Nordic curls, which I tend not to train, not because I can't do them, they're like, you know, super easy for me, but I don't want people to see how strong I am. So I'll just use a, a B-roll of my wife doing assisted variation. Well, if you want to do deep decline or core work, or you want to embarrass yourself with Nordic curls, you'll need the optional leg roller attachment, which I already had since I bought it with my original AB5000. Now it is a solid attachment, though you do have to crank down these two knobs, which you can't see, and you can't see over here, so good planning on my part, but believe me, there's a pop pin here and another pin that you kind of have to crank down so it doesn't wiggle. And I know some people don't love the foam with this pad, but I think versus what you find on a bench like the Bells of Steel Buzzsaw or even the Iron Master Superbench Pro, this is a much higher quality foam. And since someone's gonna ask about it in the comments, yes, they are working on a leg curl and leg extension attachment for these benches, and they have been for at least three years now, so I have no idea when that's coming out, though you could spam the comments harassing them about it. That's what I do because they will read them, and then I can use that to bully them into some more information, and I swear that has nothing to do with you helping my video perform better on YouTube. If you decide that the leg roller attachment isn't for you, you can still use this bench for decline because the back angles to negative eight degrees and then you can adjust the seat to have literally no gap. So even if the black wing were too tall for you and at six foot, it's fine for me even at the highest position, but you could position yourself lower on the back pad if your legs didn't reach. Since we're on the topic of the zero gap feature, it's probably one of the main reasons people are gonna look to buy this bench. That's why I bought my AB5000, though there are some other compelling reasons you might want this, which we'll talk about as we go. But is it a necessary feature? Well, with most well done modern benches, I'd say no because they've closed the gap as benches have evolved. But I did say well done modern benches. Let me go grab another one real quick to show you what I mean. You see this thing, this is an $800 commercial bench and I have no idea how large this gap is. Actually, we should just measure it, but uh, I plan things out really well every time I record and I have no idea where my measuring tape is, so let's just do one of those classic awkward Gluck camera cuts. Two seconds later. All right, here we go. I haven't been this excited to measure something since I was a teenager trying to impress my girlfriend. Gee, oh my God, five and a half inches. While some might find that uh, an impressive length, I'm gonna say this is one of those times you don't wanna be bragging because I don't care if you're a, 
high production bakery like we are over here or not, nobody is gonna be comfortable slipping into that. This is why the zero gap exists. All right, before I get myself canceled, let's just move this thing out of the way and talk about how Rep has updated and upgraded the system. Originally, you had a pop pin underneath that you'd have to pull to slide the seat forward or backwards, and then another pop pin on the side. This is a bit of an awkward reach around ang angle, but this pop pin on the side, you pull to then change the angle of the seat. On the black wing, they've moved the underneath pin to the side, and while I know a lot of us guys have some pretty good wrist flexibility, this is much easier to reach. And then if you want to change the angle of the seat, you can then just pull it into position. It's much smoother and quicker than before. That being said, it's not as quick or as simple as your traditional ladder system, and it feels a little clunky, at least at first, until you get used to it. What I mean by that is if your pullout game is weak, you don't have the seat adjusted forward before adjusting the back, you'll oftentimes squish the back pad into the seat, and if you don't have the seat up against the back pad, it will wiggle, so you will have to tighten this down so it doesn't do that. Since we're already talking about adjusting the bench and the differences between the AB5000 and the Blackwing, this, if you haven't already noticed, has a ladder style back like the AB5200, except here you've got 12 back positions ranging from negative eight degrees to 85 degrees and six seat positions, which is a lot more than the AB5000. And they got rid of the top position of 90 degrees on the AB5000. So it's got more positions than the original AB5200 and the new AB5200 2.0, which I know is gonna be a big surprise to you guys, but we've also got that one coming in for a review. But this is their most versatile bench with the ability to use attachments and it having the most positions. And I like the addition of the ladder to the back versus the 5000 because I'll be honest with you, although I use every single bench I have every day, the 5000 kind of got pushed into the corner because I got sick of the double pop pin system. Well, that's mostly true, but I think the deciding factor was actually that my wife hated the awkward orientation of the front handle, which made an already heavy bench feel even heavier. There's no reason for a bench to be this heavy. But you'll be happy to hear they've fixed the handle. They've even added knurling to it and made it stainless steel. So this bench is kind of almost easier to move because this a hefty bench at 131 pounds. To put that into perspective, the 5000 is 110 pounds and the 5200 is 115. So my wife is actually going to kill me. So here's her first attempt at moving it. You can already tell she loves it. So if you're looking for a way to keep your wife happy and want a lighter bench, I'd probably check out the 4100, which is actually my wife's favorite bench. Speaking of the 4100, that's Rep's bench that currently has the most color options, but the Blackwing and the 5200 2.0 should match that once their clear coat option comes out, which by the way would be my first choice because Rep's clear coat looks great. The black one right now has six finish options, which means you should be able to find a color your wife wants, which is gonna be very important for your well being the second she tries to move this thing. But unfortunately, Rep didn't offer a purple option for the black wing like they do the 4100, so I used all my creativity and picked another red one. But as a generalization, Rep's finishes are very well applied and durable versus something like the GetRx Fid AB2, which is a better bench than the 5200, but much of that is because it's actually just a copy of the 5200 with some slight improvements. We'll see how it stands up against the AB5200 2.0 when it comes in. Anyway, the finish on the Fid AB2 has been known to chip, and GetRx doesn't always have great customer service, so at least here you know it's gonna last, which is important with something this expensive. But colors aren't your only choice when buying the Blackwing. You also have to choose between the standard width 12 inch wide pad, which keeps the bench within IPF specs 
for width and height, but they've also got a 14 inch wide pad. And I'm not sure how well you can see this, but this is what I call reps Gen 3 vinyl, or as they call it, their clean grip, which normally I'd make some type of innuendo about that name, but I'm gonna take it easy on them because they're finally starting to name their products. Not that I didn't love deciphering their cryptic numbering system. Plus, they were so excited about it that they actually forced somebody to write an entire article on the new padding. That poor bastard. Anyway, this pad, in my opinion, is their best yet. It's the same padding and vinyl that we talked about in our AB3000 review, and it'll soon be found on all of their benches. It's a little firmer and has a little more grip than their Gen 2 vinyl that Rep's been producing for the last few years. And while I actually really liked this vinyl, can you really ever have too much grip? I'd still say that the Thompson vinyl on the Manta Ray and Rogue Monster Bench is overall the best out there, but this is an upgrade over the Gen 2 that was already pretty good. Now it's a little more durable and they've also upgraded the stitching. And since the pad is your direct connection with the bench, it's one of the most important factors when picking one. For example, Rogue's AB 3.0 is an incredibly well-designed bench with a great build quality, but the pad is kind of slick and hard as a rock, ruining for me what would otherwise probably have been the best ladder style bench out there. All right, let's talk about a few other important things you should know about this bench. Rep tends to do a really good job packaging their equipment, and this bench is no exception. Everything is individually bagged, and there's plenty of foam and cardboard to keep stuff from knocking into each other. And in what has become kind of a tradition over here, I build all of my benches with my oldest son, which may help to explain why I have so many of them. And assembly couldn't have been easier. It took us just about 20 minutes, and that was with my son doing a lot of the work and him being his normal silly goose of a self. The fact that assembly is so simple is made even more impressive by how stable this bench is. Now, the 5000 was already a tank, but the Blackwing is even more so, even though their footprints are similar, because what they've done is they've tightened up the tolerances some in the hinge. Also, the back leg of the Blackwing is a little bit wider, and they've gone from, well, whatever shape you want to call this thing to, well, actually, I'm not really sure what shape this is either, but either way, it's a lower profile front foot, so it's less apt to get in your way when you're benching, and since all the legs sit on rubber, it's not gonna slide around either. It's also pretty stable when stored upright. The 5200, 4100, Rogue AB 3.0, and most other newer benches are made to store upright, but not all benches can, and some like Rep's AB3000 2.0, the 5000 or the Superbench Pro, you know, they technically can, but they're not really designed to do so because all the weight of the bench is gonna sit on the back of the pad. But what Rep's done here is much like with the GetRx Fit AB2, they've added a pad on the back for the bench to sit on. So all you got to do is make sure that the bench is in a flat position and then get ready to do the heaviest single arm row of your life. And there you go. It's uh, pretty stable as you can tell by my really technical spanking, uh, we'll call it a slapping test. Anyway, let's just get back on track. As I said when I started this video, this is in a lot of ways Rep's best bench. It's incredibly solid since it's constructed of 11 gauge steel, hence the thousand pound weight capacity. And I have to give them some credit for not just sitting back as others catch up much of the time by copying designs because this design is very well refined as they've kind of created a hybrid between the 5200 and the 5000, even though the zero gap feature is a little clunky, if not entirely necessary. Touches like the laser cut mountains on the feet that you can't actually see, or the rep logo on the back ladder, and even the stainless steel knurled handles or switch from the plastic knob to a metal one. They're all well done, and there's been a lot of subtle changes throughout which make this a great bench. Yes, it's expensive and made overseas, and I'm not sure if they'll ever come out with that leg extension leg curl attachment, but it has a lot of upgrades over these, 
and many other options. But if this one's not doing it for you, check out this playlist right here of every single bench review we've ever done. It'll be the best day of your life. Just remember to use those affiliate links. Thanks to our Patreons, links in the description. Hope this video is helpful. I'll see you next week.